I'm Zach Norman with Evolution Upholstery and Designs and today I'm going to show you how you can build this princess crown headboard like I did for my daughter. The frame for the headboard started with four 2x4s cut at 50 inches. I laid the four pieces in a square on the ground and then I took a piece of 2x12 and angled it from the top corner and then I just hand sketched the desired shape that I wanted for the crown. Uh, once I was happy with it, I took it over to the miter saw, chopped that piece off the 2x12, and went to the bandsaw and cut out my shape. If you don't have a bandsaw, you could also use a jigsaw to cut out this curve. But since I have a bandsaw and it's so fun, I decided to use the bandsaw. I used the first piece as a template for my second half and cut it out. The final 2x4 piece was a center stretcher to help support the seam in the crown. I dry fit all my pieces to make sure it looked good, then I used pocket holes to join them all together. I got the top finished and joined on the bench and then move to the floor to attach it to the base. As you can see, the top 2x4 piece that runs across, I dropped down a little bit because I wanted to have more meat for the angled crown piece to be able to screw to. Once the 2x4 frame was complete, I used it as a template for the half inch plywood support piece. Trace it on the plywood and then I used my jigsaw to cut these pieces out. Then just attach it to the 2x4 frame with just a few screws. I stood up the headboard and clamped it to my bench. Then I used the metal bed frame base rails that I got from a local furniture store to mark where my T-nut holes would need to go. I went ahead and drilled these out, but I didn't attach the T-nuts until the very end. Then I sand it on the legs. And stood the frame up as my bench rolled away. Always make sure you lock down your work pieces. Then I sanded it on the top edge of the headboard. I just wanted to make sure that that curve would look good once it was upholstered. Since everything was going to be upholstered, I didn't have to focus too much on sanding. The legs both got painted white because we wanted it to match her bedroom furniture. And I left a special message for her on the frame. I just wanted something that would be close to her every night and you know, if she got older and ever decided she wanted to recover this piece for you know, maybe her little girl, that it's a nice little surprise down the road or for anybody that you know, if we ever ended up selling it and, you know, somebody else saw who made it and why it was made. I then used the frame as a template for the phone and cut it out. 
I use a fillet knife. I found that it works pretty good for foam um, and getting it cut without really ripping it all apart. Once I got the initial foam cut out, I used a marking gauge to inset two inches from the edge. Uh, I marked the same two inches on the frame, which is where it actually got upholstered. I wanted to leave a two inch gap because that's where the nails are going to end up going and if I tried to put the nail heads in over the foam, it's going to end up breaking the nail heads or kicking them out. So this will end up making a nice smooth edge um, and give me room for my nail heads. Using my two inch line on the frame, I shot down the bottom piece of foam, then went back over and shot the top edge and then the fiber gets shot down over the outside edge of the frame. For the fabric, we went with an awesome gray suede material from Greenhouse Fabrics. One side gets shot down, then smooth it across and shoot down the other side. Then I shot down the bottom and finally came over to the top and pulled it all tight. Now I wanted to make sure there was no wrinkles so you have to pull really tight and cut slits as you go around the curves to relieve the pressure in the fabric. No princess crown would be complete without jewels to outline its beauty. So we decided to use two different diamond head upholster nails and decided to alternate the sizes from a big one to a smaller one. That way it really looks like an actual crown that's, you know, been jeweled. Once the nail heads were done, I measured the edge so I could cut the material for the welt cord that would line the front and back edge of the frame. I wanted the frame to have a boxed cushion look once it was complete, and this is the only sewing that this project took, which is kind of nice. The piping gets sewn in, then that welt cord piece gets sewn to the boxing material. Now you could also do this separate. You don't have to sew them together, but it just kind of makes it easier. Cuts out on the amount of staples you're gonna end up putting in there. So that fabric band then got shot to the frame with the piping flush with the front edge. A cardboard tack strip then goes on just to make sure that it has a flat edge as you pull the material back. Without that piece of cardboard, you can end up seeing every staple pull. A thin strip of fiber goes on next. Then we can just pull the fabric to the back, pull it tight and shoot it. Once the band is complete, the final piece of welt cord goes on. So as it turns out, I literally put my blood into this project. Awkwardly getting the camera in position. <coughs> Alright, so I want to give it just like a little, quick little tip. Uh, if you saw me rubbing something on there, what I was rubbing was a piece of ice. So unfortunately, you know, accidents always happen. Um, and doing upholstery work for some reason, and, you know, you're dealing with broken staples. Uh, I think what I sliced my thumb on uh, just a second ago was loading my staple gun. I think my fingers slid down the staples and just sliced it right open. So, you know, one of the unfortunate things, I didn't even realize I cut it. And then all of a sudden I see that there's blood on the fabric. So, 
you know that can be pretty scary whenever you spent thirty dollars or something on a piece of fabric and all of a sudden you're bleeding on it uh, if you ever bleed on your piece uh, just take a piece of ice uh, as quick as you can rub it on there uh, and that water will suck it out the more you know doom, 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 doom. And finally, every new build needs a brand. So I always want to make sure that down the road, if somebody gets a hold of a piece that I've built, that there's some kind of marking that indicates who made it. Also want to stamp the year and give a number of that piece. So this one was the first piece for 2019. A simple dust cover then goes over the back. Then the T-nuts got hammered in and now it's ready to attach to the bed frame. It's always fun making a project for someone that you love. Uh, my daughter just loves her new bed. Uh, she feels like a princess in it. So hope you like this video. If you do, be sure and give it a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to our channel. Uh, hit that bell icon so that you get notified um, on new videos. If you want to follow along with some of the process of our builds, be sure and check us out on Instagram. And for more info, you can check out our website at evolutionupholstery.com. Thanks. Blah, blah.